Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So this is going to be the tools I use video. So I did packaging I use this morning actually. Uh, this will be the third video I've recorded today. Uh, I did, I've did. i literally just finished Thursday Talks. I did an hour and 20 minutes of that. Um, I did about a half an hour video this morning. And I'm going to do probably, well I don't know how long this video is going to be. So we won't even estimate it. Um, but yeah, my voice will probably be ending up going after this. But that's okay. I won't need to record another video for a few days anyway. So, yeah. Um, so, basically, today I've got a list of a few of the items that I feel are an essential part of my business. Things that I use either on a daily basis or on a weekly basis. Um, these things are things that basically... I could, I suppose some of them I could do without, but it would be hard. Um, some of them, you know, some of them I would like um, struggle, you know, I'd struggle to actually get through uh, the everyday sort of running of the business if I didn't have them. Other ones I could probably just about get by without, but certainly a lot of these are fundamental and uh, are certainly um, a big part of running my business. So with that being said, we shall get on and uh, yeah, we shall have a look at the first item. Also, it's important to state, I think I mentioned in my last video about the packaging, none of these are in any particular order. Number one isn't you know, superior to number 10 or whatever. Um, but here we've just got this sort of unbranded tape measure, or, well not unbranded, but equipped tools. I don't think it's a particularly brilliant brand. Now what I found with tape measures is the uh, you know, the lower branded ones or the unbranded ones or whatever you want to call them uh, seem to do um, better, like they seem to last longer. I don't know why this is, um, but I've had two pretty cheap tape measures, this one and another one, and uh, they seem to last really, really long. To be honest, I don't know, maybe Equip Tools is actually a really decent brand. I don't, I don't actually know, it might be. I might be kind of doing them a, a disservice there, but... Um, you know, I've had this one and it's brilliant and I've had another like sort of uh, unbranded one or something that was brilliant as well. However, I had like a, a decent branded one. It was like a Rolson or something. I think that's a pretty decent brand and it broke really quick quickly on me. So, uh, you know, if you're going to get a tape measure, you don't necessarily need to splash out loads of money on them. Uh, what I use a tape measure for is pretty much every day is for photographing items. So I basically do photos of vases. So, you know, do like a measurement on a vase and I do like if I've got a uh, bowl or something I do a measurement of the diameter and all the rest of it. Um, I don't generally use this too much for measuring parcels. I use the next item on my list which I'll show you in a minute. But yeah tape measure is always a good tool to use in the reselling game um, especially if you are doing photos and you need measurements of those items. Not necessarily just antiques and collectibles, but for example, plush toys and stuff like that you may, may need to measure or people might like a measurement photo of. And then it saves the, you know, everyone messaging you saying, oh, what's the measurements to this? What's the measurements to that? Now, in my experience, people will still message you about the measurements, but I, I do believe it's probably fewer people than if you weren't to put the measurements in the photo. I can't prove that, but um, if I didn't put the measurements in the photo to begin with, I'm sure I would get even more messages saying, what's the measurement on this or what's the measurement on that? So it, I think it does just avoid uh, a few questions doing my measurements. So yeah, that's the uh, number one there. So next, uh, I showed this on a vlog actually. This is my really beat up uh, Royal Mail size guide. We can see it's actually coming off here. Definitely need to get a new one of these. Uh, but only about four, three or four pound on eBay. Again, as with my last video, I mentioned that I'll be putting all the links down below. I think I've got links to most of these. Uh, some of the items are more generic, so what I might do is just put a link to a search term or something, and then you can go down the search list and, and have a look uh, for the one you would like. Um, but yeah, so these are on eBay for like three or four quid. Doesn't really matter which one you one, one you get. They're all pretty much decent quality. Um, you know, I just got this for three, three pound forty nine. I think this was, um, and basically. Basically, this allows me just to, you know, check that the items are large letters and if they go as large letter or indeed a letter, however, I don't really use that uh, slot much at all. Um, but yeah, so it's just a handy tool to have. You can see that there is a measurement tool down the bottom that I still use even though it's like completely faded off. I've had this probably three years now or not, not long off it. Yeah, I would say three years to be honest. So uh, yeah, it's really beat up, really battered. 
and you can see all the lighting's pretty much coming off it to some extent anyway. Um, so yeah, they're really, really good. Um, and as I say, I use these for measuring my parcels, this measurement tool here. Um, you know, as I say, even though I can't see it, but um, yeah, it's a cool item, really, really handy. Um, you know, if you're selling a lot of large letter items or, you know, items that you're not sure would go large letter, but you know, you might need to check, this is brilliant for that. Um, so yeah. That's that one there anyway, um, and definitely a must in my opinion. So next we've got these scales. Now there's a few different scales you can buy. Ideally, you'd probably want those big heavy duty ones that uh, you know sit on a desk or something like that. They're very big heavy duty ones. Maybe even like X postal scales or something like that. You know, with the big like I think they have like a big metal dome on it to show the the size or something. Ideally, they're brilliant. You know, if if you have space and you have a bit of money to spend, they're great. Um, but these these ones I've got, I've had for about four years again. For whatever reason, these are only a fairly cheap set of sales scales, like 30 quid or something. I think we, I got these on Amazon. Uh, the, you can see their capacity is 50 kilos, so you're probably not going to need more than that. Um, but the reason I like these, uh, not only have they lasted me ages, I don't know why, I, I don't particularly take that good care of them or anything, but um, they've lasted me so long. Um, but I have actually had to put a piece of tape over this, um, let's call it battery compartment here, because it, do, it, does, uh, it does get a little bit loose after a while and it ends up falling off all the time and the batteries end up coming out. Um, but yeah, so what, what is brilliant about this, as I was saying, is this little cord thing. So if you've got a really big parcel, like I'm talking a really, really big parcel, if you had a display on this scale, for example, if you had a set of scales with just a display on here, if you were to then, you know, lay that flat and put a big parcel on it, like I'm talking a huge parcel, then that display is going to be covered up and you won't be able to see the reading with much ease. However, with this, you can just pull this little cord, let's say the, the display is underneath the box uh, on, on here you can just pull that out from under the box and then you can check the reading on it there so I do like these ones um, if you're willing to spend a little bit more money there are better scales out there but yeah so um yeah, if, you, if you've got a bit more money to spend, maybe go for a, a better scale. But to be honest, for 30 quid, these have lasted me a while. Uh, I suppose if you treat them fairly well, they'll, they'll last you. Um, but yeah, you might you might want to go for an upgraded one, or you just might want to grab yourself these. But scales are a must for uh, any reselling business, really. So next, I'm just going to run through these couple quite quickly. I've not got any props to hand for these ones. For one, the thing I'm recording on right now is a phone. And I wanted to talk about, you know, phones uh, as a tool in resign so of course we have the fact that you can download the ebay app you can check your messages you can you know check what's going out what what, you, what sales and stuff you've got but also you can obviously research things while you're out and about charity shopping or at the car boot and it means that using complete and sold listings on your phone um, you can actually gauge whether you want to pick something up while you're out and about so long as you've got 4g or 3g or whatever so um, uh, using a, a phone as a tool in this business is brilliant um, it's not necessarily a must. Um, I would say it does limit you a little bit maybe if you don't have it but I know there are people out there who still do pretty much everything on the computer um, so as long as you've got a computer you're, you're okay but it does it does help you out when you're out and about and, and stuff and obviously if you're doing Amazon FBA it's even more of a, of a must really because uh, you can download the Amazon seller app and if you're going around do, getting some retail arbitrage you can scan some of that in from supermarkets and stuff and, and that is it, it, I think it's even more so or more important um, for Amazon, for doing Amazon, because I feel like the Amazon app has not necessarily more to offer, but it just, it gives you, um, you know, it, it gives you a lot more information, especially when you're out doing RA, you kind of need to scan things in when you're doing RA on your phone, not, you know, with, with eBay, you don't necessarily need to scan things in if you kind of have a bit of prior knowledge of what you're picking up anyway, um, but with our, retail arbitrage, you kind of need it, so... Yeah, for Amazon, definitely a phone is a must. And uh, next one that, again, I've not got to hand, actually, I've not got three of these to hand, um, is a printer. So you can see my one down here, may well, maybe. It's a laser printer. It's a Brother HL1112, I think. Um, it does about 20 pages per minute anyway. And the toner, it lasts me about six to eight months, and that's printing pretty much consistently every day. So uh, really, really good. Uh, toner isn't necessarily really expensive. You can go down the route of getting a third-party toner, but, you know, 
it's up to you you know if you want to do that you can or you can get the genuine uh, there are third party toners out there that are you know much cheaper um but it really depends on on whether you want uh i suppose it is i was going to say whether you want to take that risk because it's not that much of a risk but it can always be a little bit of a risk sometimes but um yeah so I use that obviously printing my labels and also uh, a good printer is also brilliant for printing out your your you know PayPal reports or your eBay reports or whatever for um, putting in your files and folders for your tax and for HMRC and you know just uh, documents like that so printer is great for anything in the business really uh, it is a must and uh, I would say if you're a smaller reseller maybe just uh, pay a little bit more or whatever for a laser printer well to be honest some laser printers are cheaper than inkjets anyway but um you know maybe get a laser printer first off because it's a lot quicker and uh, sometimes it can be uh, more well actually it is uh, less expensive to um run so with that being said, you know, if you're a new reseller and just getting into this, maybe you're not using a printer that much, maybe you're not selling that much, but maybe you you can look with the future in mind and think to yourself, actually, I'm going to get a laser printer because I know that at some point in the future, I'll probably end up needing to change from an inkjet to a laser anyway, just for cost efficiency and also speed as well, because uh, laser printers do uh, print stuff quicker. So, you know, it might be an idea just to get yourself a laser printer. There's also printers like, uh, I think, Dymos and stuff that print one label. Um, at a time so that means that you're wasting less paper um, however I don't think you'd be able to print documents and stuff off on those so you might have to have a Dymo and then you might have to have another printer for printing documents if that's something you'd like to do so um, yeah so that's the um, printer and then obviously you can see right there I've got my photography light set up right there. I use a softbox light. It's uh, the ones off eBay. You can get two of them for like 35 quid or 30 quid. Um, and they're really, really good. Lasted me a very, very long time. Um, and easy to set up. They come on a stand. They're very easy just to set the softbox up and, and screw the light bulb in. And they just make your photos look so brilliant. So, yeah, two nice lights either side of a, a nice uh, white background. Or maybe you could do a black background or something like that. Uh, two nice lights set up. As I say, 30 quid, 35 quid, they make your photos look so much better. If you haven't got uh, photography lights, softbox lights, or anything like that, or even LED lights or something, I've got an LED, a newer LED light up there. Anything like that will work brilliant, and it'll just enhance your photos. And if you can provide the customer with, basically, if you show them that you've, you're a quality seller um, in your photograph, in your title, straight away, immediately, they can see that then, uh, you know, with a good photo and stuff, then they're going to be more likely to buy off you than someone else. But yeah, I mean, just, yeah, get some photography lights, make your photos look good, and uh, yeah, you'll be well on your way to selling plenty of items then. So yeah, that's photography lights, and then I've got some more props for the next few now. Um, so next is bags now. I just get these from supermarkets, and sometimes I might buy bags for life, like either the fabric ones or or the you know the just the stronger plastic ones. Um, I'm not going to actually put a link down below for these because there isn't really a link. I, I just generally say you know try and ask your friends and family for bags, or uh, you know maybe they're looking out for bags or whatever, or they've got some bags stored away somewhere, whatever the case may be. Uh, get them looking out for bags, and maybe they will give you some. Also. If you have to go in and maybe buy a couple of bags for life, they're going to last you a while anyway. Try and get some bigger bags if you can, because if you're going to source into the car boots or charity shops, you will want some bigger bags opposed to smaller bags, um, because then you can just hold more stuff and it's more efficient. Also, we've got uh, granny trolleys that I've not really mentioned. Uh, you can have a granny trolley if you want, so it's one of those little trolleys, you know, square trolleys with like four legs. You can have one of them for going around with car boots, and you can use them in conjunction with uh, with these bags. I don't know whether you can get those trolleys online or not. I'm guessing you probably can. If I do actually find a link, then I will drop one down below. If not, I'm sure you can just search Amazon or eBay for, uh, you know, just, I don't know, trolley or something. I, I don't know what you are typing four wheel trolley or something. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, so you might be able to find one of them anywhere, or at least I might be able to put a link down below for you. So that's always something. So I either bags or um, one of those trolleys. I didn't really mention trolleys, or I didn't really think to mention trolleys, because I don't actually use one. Uh, I did have one for a little bit, but it wasn't really suited to me. I just, 
I was pushing it along and it, 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 I don't know, I don't know whether the wheels weren't brilliant on it or anything, but it just wasn't suited to me. So I just like the bags, you know, generally. Um, and especially when you've got like a rough field, like a not a very smooth uh, field if you're going to a car boot, sometimes pulling them along can be a bit of a, a nuisance. But at the end of the day, if you have uh, one of those trolleys and you have some bags with you, you can actually increase the efficiency of how much stock you can hold before going back to the car or anything like that. So yeah, bags and trolleys and the rest of it, that's always a good tool to use as well. So next is files and notepads. Now I've got some files down there. I'll actually here, just pull, pull one up here. So I've got like a concertina folder here. I have quite a lot of these. Uh, these are just generally what I put my receipts in and stock purchases, equipment purchases, all the rest of it. I just put them all in like these different concertina folders. And these are 12 month folders. So you, you know, you've got like little 12 pockets pockets in there for each month of the year. Um, so yeah, they're really, really good, the, the files and folders. Uh, you obviously need them, or well, not necessarily need them, but you need at least some sort of way of storing your receipts for, uh, you know, taxation and HMRC and record keeping and all that. So these little concertina folders are brilliant, uh, nice little uh, folders they are. And uh, you can separate them out however you want. If you want to separate equipment purchases out from, you know, stock or whatever, do that. And, you know, se separate bit different bits out, separate maybe your your sales information out like your PayPal reports maybe put them in one etc um so yeah, uh, the files are really cool. So I would say files and folders are, uh, you know, a big one really, uh, something that I use quite a lot, quite regularly. And also, as I mentioned here, notepads as well. I have so many notepads for all different things, general business plans. I have to-do list notebooks. I've also got a couple of notebooks that I've actually kept that are just old to-do lists and stuff like that. I've got um, books for passwords and things like that. So yeah, there's just so many different um, books and stuff I've got. Um, I, I just use notepads all the time. Mainly it is for to-do lists. I mean, as you can see here, uh, this was my to-do list. Well, not necessarily to-do list, but just random bits and bobs uh, pertaining to this video and other different videos I'm doing and, and to-do lists and stuff. But um, yeah, so it's kind of it just uh, notepads and stuff are, are a must as well really uh, i mean it doesn't matter that much i suppose if you're not doing um to-do lists and stuff but actually i've got my costs in this book as well i have a backup of my uh you know some of my different costs in the business in here uh just on a paper copy because i like to do a little bit of a backup um so i even have that in there so you know there's it's just you know, whatever you want to do, you don't need to have loads of notebooks or anything, um, but you, you, know, you might need to have a few just for different little bits and bobs. And it's always nice to have like a little notebook for general plans or where you want to go or the field, you know, where, where you want the business to go in the future. Obviously, you'll also need like stationery and stuff to go along with it. So I've got, you know, scissors and pens and stuff here. So that could be another thing uh, in the realm of those sort of notebooks and files and stuff. Also, uh, next thing is post-it notes. So I am going to be quite wary of time now because I don't know how much longer my battery is going to last and I don't want it to cut off. But uh, post-it notes. Now what I do with these, I got this trick from Nick Hill. So thank you very much, Nick, if you're watching. Um, basically what I do is I stick, I write on the post-it note um, what the item is I've just packaged up and just boxed up. And then I literally peel the post-it note off and put it on the, on the box. And then that means that when I come to label the parcels up, which is normally a couple of hours after I've uh, labeled uh, package them well it depends sometimes it's immediately after um other times you know when packaging up in the afternoon i might not label them up till the next day or something so um you know it depends when it is i'm actually packaging up but what this allows me to do is remember what is in each parcel so it completely stops or well reduces to the best possible ability because i am human after all i'm going to make a mistake every now and then uh, it reduces to the best possible um, outcome really um, the ability to not send customers the wrong item so yeah that's what i use post-it notes for it's kind of the only thing i use post-it notes for but i thought it was worth mentioning i do use them pretty much every day um and yeah they've, they've served their purpose really well uh, in that way that I just described so yeah that's post-it notes and then finally there's just one other thing that um, I need to mention that again I've not got a um, actual prop for or anything but that is just storage boxes so of course like I just use general storage boxes I don't really go for the really useful storage boxes I have got a couple and you know if you've got some money to splash out then I would suggest going for the really useful storage boxes 
But at the same time, you know, I just generally get like the cheapest boxes I possibly can. Places like, um, well, there's like a pound stretcher or something near me. They're normally cheap. You can get them for B&Q, but I don't know what the prices are like there. They might be a bit expensive. Really useful storage boxes. I do... I say I have got a couple because every now and then they do do discounts of them and I sometimes buy a couple in those discounts just because they are much better quality. The only thing I would say with the cheaper ones is generally they do have the ability of a kind of annoying uh, factor of breaking um, at the sides like where you're trying to pick them up the plastic comes off or plastic like cracks down the side so you have got to be careful and obviously if that breaks while you're handling it you can suddenly cut yourself luckily it's never happened to me but I always fear oh god you know it's going to break off and it's going to cut me or something um but yeah, so that can be sometimes, uh, you know, something you've got to watch out for with the cheaper ones. Sometimes they just generally don't last as long. Um, but yeah, there's loads of different options for storage boxes out there. What I will do is, as I say, I don't really buy off a specific listing for these or anything like that. But um, what I will do is put a link down below to maybe some eBay search results of, of just random storage boxes. And you can have a look through the search results and, and see if any take your fancy and see if uh, any cheap ones are available or anything like that. Um, but yeah, so storage boxes are a must. I use them to keep my stock. Uh, generally, like I store listed stock in them. I store stuff in my lockup in them because if I didn't have storage boxes in my lockup, it would just be a crazy pile of mess everywhere. So um, I have storage boxes in my lockup and I use them just to store unlisted stock. Um, I have storage boxes in the other room under the sh under the posting tables in there. Um, so they just help organise things a little bit better. Um, and it just means that there's not stuff everywhere, everywhere. It just organises them into nice little compartments, you know. So um, there's loads of different storage boxes you can get for loads of different price levels. So uh, whatever you your, you know, whatever you want to go for, whatever your budget is, then that's perfectly fine. If you want to get the cheaper ones, go for that. If you want to get uh, some better quality ones, then go for that because... Even so, you know, the cheaper ones have the uh, benefit of obviously being cheaper, um, so you're going to get them for cheaper, or uh, the more expensive ones have the benefit of maybe being, uh, you know, more long-term solutions. So whichever you go for, it's still going to be, there's going to be a benefit there for you. So, yeah, anyway, I will leave it there, guys, before my battery cuts out. Uh, thank you very much for watching. As I mentioned throughout this video, links will be down below to pretty much everything you see here, or there might be a couple of bits I can't link to, so I'll just put a sentence on where I actually get them. For example, like the bags, I'll put a sentence on where I get them from. Um, and yeah, so check down there for, for the links. Um, and uh, yeah, if you like the video, please do like it. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the next one. So I'll see you very soon, guys.